Hello, my name is Malika Dolobelayoub. I'm a public health medical doctor and I'm in charge of one of the two registers of childhood disabilities in France. I will present you our work published in the July 2017 issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology, which study the prevalence and characteristics of autism spectrum disorders among children with cerebral palsy. This work used the data from one population-based surveillance program in UK and four cerebral palsy registers in Europe which participate to the SCPE network, that is, the Surveillance of Cerebral Palsy in Europe network. Among children with cerebral palsy, various behavioural, emotional or psychiatric disorders have already been described. The co-occurrence of autism spectrum disorders, or AESD, have been more rarely studied, and previous results suggested a higher prevalence than in the general population. But very little is known about the factors which are associated with such diagnosis among children with cerebral palsy. Our first aim was to evaluate the frequency of co-occurring AESD using a population-based database in five areas of Europe. 1,225 children with cerebral palsy were included in this study. 107 of them had a diagnosis of AESD, which represent 8.7% of the samples, with great disparities among the areas. The second objective was to determine whether the known risk factors for AESD among the general population were also relevant in children with cerebral palsy. Male sex was significantly associated with AESD diagnosis, but the sex ratio was much lower than in the general population, even among the children without associated intellectual disability. No association was observed with the maternal age at birth. Epilepsy was significantly associated with AESD diagnosis as expected. And for perinatal factors, results were conflicting because of opposite results uh, observed in the different areas studied. Finally, the non-risk factors uh, in the general population were not clearly found among our children with cerebral palsy, and in some centers, preterm birth or birth rate results were even the reverse of those expected. The population of children with AESD and cerebral palsy may be different than that of the children with AESD only and deserve to be better assessed. The study of the clinical characteristics showed that children with AESD had better working abilities than those without, maybe because AESD uh, is mm, harder to assess in the group with the poorest mobility. Finally, an important question is whether the increased risk of AESD among children with cerebral palsy is limited or not to children with intellectual disability. As expected, intellectual disability was an important factor associated with AESD diagnosis among children with cerebral palsy. However, 6.4% of the children with cerebral palsy and without intellectual disability still had a co-occurring AESD diagnosis, which is a proportion obviously much higher than in the general population. In conclusion, children with cerebral palsy are clearly at increased risk of AESD, including those without intellectual disability, and all of the children with cerebral palsy should specifically be screened for autism spectrum disorders. Thank you very much for your attention.